Hello. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I wanted to make a short video today. When I say short, who knows how long it will be? Because I say short and sometimes it's longer. Um, continuing on about our discussion we had last video um, about something that Kuei said. Kuei was a huge proponent of... Um, you know, implanting, suggesting an, an idea to yourself and having it accepted in your mind and suggesting it again and again, repetitively. Uh, he was a huge proponent of doing that and um, then taking action and taking action during your entire life, doing stuff. Um, and this seems like pretty much common sense, but... So often these days we find, um, like on social media, when people talk about LOA, law of assumption, manifesting ideas, there is a uh, oversimplification of what some of these teachers are saying. I would say specifically teachers like Abraham Hicks and Neville, where it's like you don't have to lift a finger, you know, do nothing, it's just going to come to you type thing. And, you know, we can debate semantics and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes things do seemingly just come out of thin air, what have you. But in my experiences, both with myself and working with many people, usually what happens is we're taking actions, we're living our day-to-day -day life, we're taking appropriate action if we feel beckoned to do something inspired. Uh, but regardless, we're you know living our daily life. We're not just sitting down waiting for the thing to come to us. That's usually how... Um, our life can practically improve and how things can quote unquote manifest for us externally, right? We're taking action and actually living. We're not waiting for the thing to come because when you're waiting for something to manifest, your state of mind is that it's not here yet. While if you're taking action, the assumption is much more like this thing is coming to me. I'm getting this thing. I psychologically already have it. It's going to show up in my external world soon. Um, and you're just taking action and living your life and allowing it to be there. And it will externally show up sooner or later um, a lot of the time because of that. And if it doesn't show up in the form you want, it will often show up in another very suitable form that you like. All right? So there's a huge difference between just sitting on your butt and trying to manifest something, which is possible. But as I said the other day, you got to be in a really good state of mind to do that. Um, there's a huge difference between that and like living your life and taking action and, and doing things. Kue the other day, we quoted from Self Mastery Through Conscious Auto Suggestion, which I've said a hundred times and I'll keep on saying is the best book ever written about these law of attraction, law of assumption ideas, in my opinion. Self Mastery Through Conscious Auto Suggestion, there's a very good chapter about the education of children. And Kue wrote, Teach them above all that they must set out in life with the very definite idea that they will succeed. Under the influence of this idea, they inevitably will succeed. Not by sitting down quietly, expecting events to happen, but influenced by this idea, they will do all that is necessary for complete success do. They will act. They will not be sitting down quietly. They will be doing stuff to manifest externally what they want, to manifest success in their life, to manifest health, wealth, peace, whatever language you want to use. Now, a little bit earlier in this short essay that's included in Self Mastery through Conscious Thought Suggestion, Kuei wrote, this is, again, super important and somewhat nuanced. Um, this is Kuei's opinion, and you might disagree. And listen, I'm saying all this stuff, and please understand, I'm the author of Relax More, Try Less, okay? I love relaxing and being chill. I try to be a chill dude to the best of my abilities, right? I'm just saying you got to take action. There's no contradiction there. Anyway, Kuei wrote, Impress upon them, above all, that work is essential for man. And that he or she who does not do work of one kind or another is a useless, worthless creature. Impress upon them that all work produces in the man who does it 
a wholesome and profound satisfaction. While idleness, which appears so desirable to many, produces wariness, nerinstensia, disgust with life, leading those who have not the means of satisfying passions created by idleness to debauchery and crime. That's a very interesting paragraph. Again, you don't have to necessarily agree with everything that Kuwait says there. But gosh, can I relate to that? And I think a lot of people can. Kuwe says, you know, so often we have this idea that we want to be idle, right? That we want to basically relax, right? Just be relaxed. But us attempting to relax and not really feeling relaxed leads to alienation, leads to wariness, not knowing, you know, not having a direction in life, um, feeling, you know, basically like not a part of, of the world in a good way. And, you know, these are feelings that I really felt growing up a lot. You know, I had a very sensitive, um, you know, sensibility, I guess. I had like an artistic sensibility. And I always felt like misunderstood by um, a lot of people. Like, you know, I, I always disliked school, especially when I got older, like, you know, middle school, high school, college. <laughs> like, I, I didn't like any of that stuff because I felt very much like... Um, you know, just, I didn't fit in. I felt alienated. And the people I associated with, my friends, some of which are still my best friends to this day, felt the same way. You know, a lot of times artists feel alienated from mainstream society. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. But at the same time, we get alienated and feel wary and tired and disgusted with life um, for really no good fucking reason. And a lot of times that's what leads to drug use and uh, you know, other kinds of excessive addictions, you know, what, what, whether it's like a major addiction or a minor addiction, like playing video games too much or whatever, it's because there's, there's an idleness and a lack of direction. And this is so common. I can um, never pronounce this word right, but neurasthenia, neurasthenia, I can never say that right. Anyway, that just means like, you know, like feeling fatigued and what we're talking about, not um, having direction in our life. And I think William James, who we've mentioned before in the podcast, just a, a great, <laughs> William James is just a great teacher of psychology. Um, and, you know, he called uh, neurasthenia like American Titus, basically. It's so common in the United States, especially, but ac across the world. But so common in the United States to, to have this wariness and this alienation. It's almost like a thing. It's like cool, right? Rebel without a cause. Um, but just to feel alienated, right? Um, but Kuwe saying, that's bullshit. <laughs> you got to get over yourself. You should have um, something you do. You should have something you're passionate about. And that you know, you should want to be doing work of some kind that you can align with, you know? For instance, if you're an artist, you want to be doing artistic work, you know? But whatever you're called to do, you want to do it, right? And it's understandable to be alienated from mainstream culture. I still am alienated from mainstream culture in so many ways. But I found a lot more satisfaction in my life by aligning with what I actually want to do, you know? Like when I was younger, I used to rent apartments for a living. I, I, I couldn't relate to that really at all. And doing what I do now, doing what I've done for like the last 10 years, I'm aligned with it. I enjoy it, right? And like Kuwait said, work is essential for man. And it, it produces in the man or woman who does it a wholesome and profound satisfaction. It's important to recognize. Again, this is like uncommon common sense. Kuwait said, idleness, which appears so desirable to many, you know, I just want to, you know, I remember it's like, oh, I don't want to go to school today. I don't want to do anything. I just want to lie on the couch and smoke weed and, you know, listen to music or whatever. So many people are like that, not just teenagers, right? It seems so desirable, but it produces wariness, neurasthenia, disgust with life, leading those who have not the means of satisfying passions you know, aligning with what they want to do and doing work in that regard leads them to debauchery and crime and an unfulfilled life. 
Very interesting. Very nuanced. So often we are trying to manifest something out of desperation. You hear Abraham Hicks, you hear Neville, so you don't have to do a thing, right? So it's like, all right, I'm going to do this technique and, and, you know, have a high vibe or already feel it as being real. And then I'm just going to sit on my butt and wait for it to come. Probably not going to work because there is a wariness and idleness an alienation from your desire being there. You know, you're not aligned with your desire. Everything else is feels off. And you want everything else to feel on. You want to feel aligned. You want to produce within yourself a wholesome and profound satisfaction. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. That is what LOA techniques are really for a lot of the time, in my opinion, is producing that wholesome and profound satisfaction and producing it quickly. Auto-suggestion is one way. There are so many ways, so many different LOA techniques, as we always discuss here and in the podcast. Um, So utilize them. And remember that a wholesome and profound satisfaction is often what we're really aiming for, no matter what we're doing. Hope this was helpful. If you have questions or if you'd like personal one-on-one coaching with me, radicalcounselor.com.